Imagine being able to restore a torn card in a second, leaving no flaps, no ugly creases or tears. This gimmick does everything for you. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you the self-restoring card. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this tutorial video where I'm going to teach you how to make one of the most powerful gimmicks in my repertoire. This is it, right here. The self-restoring card. It looks like a normal playing card. From the front, there are no creases, there are no tears, there are no flaps, there just seems to be nothing going on. And yet it starts out as a torn corner effect where you have two separate pieces and they just meld into one and you're left with this incredible thing. Now, the gimmick is gonna do all of the work for you. There's no sleight of hand here, but to make the gimmick, there is a little bit of a process. So grab yourself two playing cards, some elastic thread, some magnets, some scissors, some tape, and we're gonna use all of those things to make this thing right here. Trust me, it is so worth it. This is gonna blow your mind, even when you're performing it. All right, so here is how you're gonna make the gimmick. The things you want, like I said, two playing cards, but they need to be court cards. Jacks, queens, and kings are perfect for this. You'll see why later on, but those are the cards. This is the elastic thread. This is always the elastic thread I use. Just super invisible, super thin, super flexible, super strong as well. And if you want to get this exact type of elastic thread, believe me, it will last a lifetime. There is so much of this. I think there's something like four meters or something ridiculous. You're never gonna get to the end of it, um, but it will last you a lifetime of making gimmicks. And there is a link down in the description to my Amazon affiliate link. If ever you're gonna get anything from Amazon, Consider using my affiliate link, I get a small commission and uh, it helps me out, but yeah, that uh, is linked down in the description if it's still available. A sewing needle, of course, and some magnets. Without further ado, you're gonna take your two cards and pop them on top of each other like this. Once the cards are perfectly squared up, you're gonna take your sewing needle, just like this, and you're gonna go for one of the corners of the frame, the sort of blue frame around the outside of the king you are going to attack one corner, and I've done it here just for ease of uh, explanation. You're gonna poke a hole right the way through this one and this one, so lengthways opposite each other, you're gonna do a hole here and here, and that's through both cards. Make sure they are perfectly squared up, that hole goes through both. And now you're gonna take your elastic thread, and this can be threaded onto the needle if you wish, or if you want to just do it freehand like this, you can just like so. That goes through the first hole, and then once you're on one side, you're going to go back through the same side. This is by far the most fiddly part of the explanation, but now you have two cards perfectly linked onto the thread like so. You can take your scissors and just chop a nice length like this. Give yourself lots of excess. And now we're gonna tie this in a knot. Now some of you regulars of the channel might recognize this setup. This is gonna be familiar to you. This is the exact setup of the self-changing card tutorial. This is what you do to make the self-changing card. Of course here we're making the self-restoring card, but the mechanics are actually very, very similar. So in the self-changing card, you have two different cards but they are elasticated together like this, and the change happens when one flips around in front of the other. If you wanna go and check that tutorial out in full to get the full uh, mechanics of it, you can. But we're in a similar situation. How do we use this to create the self-restoring card? That's the question. Well, you will see before we answer that question, you're gonna need the magnets and peel away any of the backing because you certainly do not need the backing. Okay, this is where things get a little bit complicated. Open out your gimmick so that it's just flat. Open it like a book and place one just here and take another magnet, place it just here. If I just zoom in so you can see this, the magnets aren't central. The center of the card is about here and the magnets are just off center about here. Again, you will uh, see why and uh, you can probably hear that I just got a little bit of tape just then. And I'm gonna just tape these down into position. Now you're gonna fold the uh, cards over, the gimmick over. You're gonna take your second magnets, again, peel away any backing, and this time you're just going to drop them onto the card so that they magnetize in 
the right way. The self-changing card never had any magnets as part of its construction, but here the magnets are crucial because we want these two cards to align absolutely perfectly. I would say at this point, just make sure that everything is perfectly squared up like I did just then, so that when we take stuff down, the magnets truly are in the right position. All right, one more length of tape as you heard. This is what we're now left with. From the back, you can see two magnets taped down. We've got the thread going through both. You can open these up like a book, just like this. We have magnets on the inside. This can be elasticated all the way around. And what these cards want to do is close. So what we're gonna do is take this backmost card and tear a corner off it. This is why the magnets are slightly to one side, so we have more room along here to tear. Just like so, keep the corner, because that'll be important in performance. And this is the entire gimmick. This is what you're going to need to make the trick happen. There's a couple of ways of performing this trick. The first one uses a really high camera angle like so. We take the card, as you can see, the piece fits, and then it comes together like so, and everything is restored. Now, the way this works, as you can see, the piece is literally just behind the card. It's so simple, like, literally the gimmick is doing everything here. I just open it out, and this whole card, the restored card, is just gonna fold and hang from a uh, exposed angle. You can see the card is literally just hanging here, and I'll perform the trick from this angle. All I'm doing is I show that the piece matches, and then as I drop the card, I'll try and do it in slow motion, it just sort of loops around. Because of the elastic, this hanging card really wants to flip around. It really doesn't take much movement for it to flip around. So I hold it like so, I show the piece matches, and I just allow it all to fold. <laughs> it, it feels like magic. It feels like such true magic because the card just comes together. I then hold the card with the piece at the back, and I can literally just show that the corner is now complete. I mean, that in itself is a great way of performing it. This is a version I much prefer though, and as you can see, I've lowered the camera angle to a much more comfortable height, and I can really show the card from a lot of angles here. I can come right up close, they can see the piece is missing, and then all I have to do is lay it on my hand and watch that corner just pop into existence. <laughs> and once again, I can come right back up to the camera and show there's no creases or anything like that, and that is such a great visual because you don't even need the torn corner. You can use it and I'll show you how in a second, but you don't even need the corner. It just, it's missing and then it pops into existence on the card and it's just great. Now, this one's super, super cool. Once again, we open the gimmick up. We flip the whole card around to the back and that's pretty much it. All I'm gonna do is now clip the card between middle finger and index finger, the torn card I clip like so, and my thumb is then just at the back. So from the back, I'm just holding the card like so, and I can do that on both sides. What this actually does as well is it hides the little tiny bits of elastic, which most people wouldn't notice anyway. I'm not worried about people noticing that on camera, but when I'm this close, they, they might. And so me holding the card like this, not only is it a nice little display, like I'm really holding it by the edges, but I'm actually hiding the elastic. So I clip it like this on both sides. I can come, I can show that that corner really is missing. All I'm gonna do now is take this hand and place it under the card. And from the back, you can see I'm just lying the card on, on my hand. From this angle, it looks like it's just a card on my hand. Of course, back here, we've got this whole thing lying sort of at a right angle, basically, hanging down to the ground. To make the card restore, all I need to do is put my thumb on the card and whip that top piece round. So one more time, <laughs> if I uh, set it up, it's just lying on my hand like so. My thumb goes on just to make sure the card doesn't fly away. And then it just literally, I don't even need to explain it. You just whip the card round, it does it itself. And once again, I can come to the camera, I can show this really close up and there's nothing to see, it's undetectable. Everyone's gonna be focusing here on the video when you perform this. No one's gonna notice this elastic, partly because it's in line with the border of the card, but also, why would anyone look over here? It's not even, I mean, it doesn't even come up on camera, it's, it's invisible. If you wanna do this version, but with the torn corner, then like I said, you can. All you do is you place the torn corner onto the card, and just like that, it restores. Now, I have done a sneaky thing here to the corner itself, because if you wanna do this variation, what I find is that the corner will often sort of go flying. 
So as you can see, if I shake the card around, that corner's not going anywhere because I've applied a little bit of double-sided stick tape. So if I open this gimmick out again, I lay it flat, we're set up. This has got double-sided sticky tape, so all I do is I'm literally just sticking it lightly to the card so that I can do the restoration and it just kind of happens. And the great thing about this is it's then just one piece because that torn corner is inside the gimmick. So yeah, just like that. So there we have it. That is the self-restoring card. I'm going to be sending both of these sets of gimmicks, the one that I made in this video and the one I performed with in the intro, I'm gonna be sending both sets to random king tier members of the Magician Club. If you don't know what the Magician Club is, it's a vast library of magic from myself and a bunch of other magicians that is constantly being added to every single month. For $15 right now, you can get 120, yes, 120 magic products, tutorials, masterclasses, lectures, some of which are over an hour and a half long on their own and packed full of tricks. If that sounds interesting, if that sounds like a deal you want to be a part of, then hit the link in the description or go to themagician.club and sign up today. And like I said, two King Tier members will be getting these gimmicks. The King Tier is $30 a month. It gets you access to over a thousand dollars of magic books and loads of other content plus physical rewards like decks of cards and magic tricks sent to your door the king tier will be getting their hands on these and a load of other stuff very very soon thanks for listening thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already i do anything and everything to do with magic so if you've watched this far you probably like magic make sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video until then take care